the nerves read up, I'ma be a DJ with the nose bleeders. I got them dead fellas with me in the trap. Got bones in my bag, yeah, I'm in the back. All my dead fellas, where you at? I've been out here getting racks, you can check the road map. So what's up? We back. We at the Boneyard today, one of my favorite personal spots. It's a barbecue place. I know people talk about Kansas City barbecue, down south barbecue, but Detroit also has barbecue. It's gonna be me and my cousin chopping it up, so come check it out with us. My name is Evie Sosimich. Everybody knows me here at the Boneyard as Eve. Uh, I am one of the owners here. Originally my family is from Europe, from former Yugoslavia. Uh, they came over here to live the American dream. What makes it special is I think my staff, you know, they've been, most all my staff has been here for over 10 years. And, uh, and it's a lot to do with them, you know, and the hard work that we do put in, you know, from generation to generation. I'm third generation, you know, uh, and I think that's what makes it really special. And everything is fresh and homemade here. So taking it back, kind of show you how everything comes out. This is where the magic is made. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I don't know about magic. magic I don't believe in magic. magic. Nah, I believe in reality. Yeah. This is where it really, really happens. Yeah, for sure. So these are my guys back here. All these guys have been here over 10 years. I've been coming here for what 23 years. Yeah. You know, so oh, wow. you know all the good spots to come to. Yeah. That's for sure. Oh yeah, for you know sure. That. Okay, so mostly on this side, we do the fry stuff. This is the grill side for the ribs, right here. We use usually like steaks, chicken. Mm. Right now we're cooking the chicken for you guys. Fries over there. Everything made fresh. I remember you mentioning like, you know, that everything will be what? You said like cooked or gone by like two o'clock or something like that? Yeah, so in the ribs in the back. Gotcha. So gotcha. it'll be done by two, prep them here, cook them on this grill. Gotcha. Come gotcha. to perfection. How many, how many like, if you had to estimate, how many racks of ribs do y'all go through like daily? About 300 or 500 ribs a day. This is our guy right here. Hardest working man you're gonna ever meet. That's what's up. And I'm not, I'm not kidding either. He's here, he gets here probably about four in the morning. And this is what he does right here. Salts the ribs, finishes them up on this right here, on the rotisserie. Mm. This, is how, this is kind of the boneyard, why we are the boneyard. And our ribs are a little different than everybody else because they are on an open flame rotisserie. Gotcha. Yeah, so that's how they start over here, and then we kind of just finish them off okay. on the grill up okay. front. So what, what kind of got you into, you know, the barbecue, not even the food business, but more so like the specifics of barbecue? You know, like why I like Boneyard, Boneyard barbecue? Well, I mean, our family, we, we come from, you know, from, from, from Europe, so grandfather came here. Actually, uh, my, my, wife's, my wife's grandfather, He's the one who started it all. Wow. You know, you know, the guy by himself didn't speak any English. So the menu, there used to be numbers. Really? It was only like seven things. So he didn't know. So, you know, number one was a, a, a boneyard special. Number two was a half chicken. The guy would cook and serve. Wow. We started off here at 500 square feet. Wow. From that, we built and four restaurants. And um, how long has this boneyard? Is this is this like it's the, the original first, boneyard? It's the original it's boneyard. The OG okay. right here, yeah. And how long has um, has this one been here? This one's been here, fifty years. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Fifty years. Wow. Yeah. And again, I, and to kind of speak to, I think what makes this place special is you know, being able to go through a recession, being able to go through a pandemic you know, as a, as a more so kind of like, not like a chain restaurant, you know, yeah. speaks to the, to the quality, you know, that, that you guys are producing, you know, cause again, I mean, through those times like that, it's tough, you know, so to be able to, you know, stay afloat, keep business booming, have these things going, you know, through these tough times, I think again, speaks to the hard work of Absolutely. the business and the people that you have and also the quality of the food. Good. What's up, buddy? It's, 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 it's been a while. I know, I know, I know. Kind of talk a little bit about like being a Detroit native. Being a Detroit guy growing up, um, we, we, we stayed in the sports. It was always an activity, you know, like our parents never let us sit idle in the house, playing video games all day. They always had us involved in something. St. Martin de Pores, <laughs> you know, and the impact that that had on, I would say, you know, like a whole, you know, wave of guys coming out of Detroit. 
you know, because I remember, you know what I'm saying, for me, even growing up when I was young, like my grandmother, she lived on Six Mile, uh, well, she lived um, right off of Six Mile Outer Drive, you know, which wasn't too far from St. Martin DePores. Right. You know, so I grew up thinking I was gonna go to DePores. You ready to order? Uh, yes. Um, so, can we get a, uh, well, I'll let you do this. Yeah, I'll let yeah. you order the, <laughs> say less. Yeah. We're gonna do a little bit of everything. Okay. So, you know, if you can, uh, I'm thanks, thanks. Okay. I appreciate it. No so yeah, if you could kind of talk about, you know, high school and kind of how that how that went. And mm. cause again, for me from the outside looking in, I'm like, probably about that time I'm super young. But I remember the St. Martin de Poor days and kind of like the impact that that had just in general. I'd always kind of grew up, um, I was kind of a King fan, Martin Luther King fan. Uh, shout out to the Crusaders for all my buddies that went there. But uh, they had an MSAT program and I was really into math and science. So that's kind of where um, me going to Go Lightly Educational Center, where my path was, was going to go. Well, there were some crazy things that happened the fall going into my uh, ninth grade year. The Detroit Public School teachers went on strike. So mom Glenn was like, you not about to be sitting out of school. This is pretty nice. Okay, you got the shrimp. shrimp. We got an onion ring. We got, ring. Well. We got the whole setup. This is not the usual off season uh, platter. <laughs> it, it's funny because yeah. I tell people all the time. It's yeah, like, one more That's okay. One of the reasons was always tough for me to come home is like I have to hit my spots. You, and so you have to I don't eat. I don't come Man. home often, but I'll say that I think that actually benefits me from a from a diet restriction. And this really is the spot. When I tell people all the time, like, yo, like these are my spots, or like Boneyard's my spot. I don't even think people kind of understand it, but it's funny, like speaking like to you about it, and I was telling them it's like I remember when coming in the boneyard when it's like smoking, non-smoking. Like that's how far back, <laughs> back. I can like Long recollect time. like coming to come in the boneyard. Dude, well, we both kind of grew up in this area yeah, too. So yeah. uh I can remember back like you said, it's like I'm talking nine, ten years old walking up in here. This was like the this was like, you know, they'd be like, we going to Sizzle. Yeah, we yeah, go yeah. like this was the spot. Boneyard was the spot. Boneyard was the spot. When your, when your parents said do you want to go out to eat? Boneyard the, or, the or whole the whole car. Boneyard. We not, boneyard. Not only was it that, but it was whenever for us it was like whenever we was like celebrating something or something like that. Exactly. You know like if this is my birthday, birthday, like boneyard, like we going to boneyard. Exactly. Whenever I would come into town, I could not leave back out to go to back without to Canada boneyard. without going to the boneyard. You had to get the roasted chicken. It was you had to get the cottage fries. It was now, times where my parents were driving up to Chicago. <laughs> I would tell them like, yo, like if y'all can, like y'all have to bring bone y'all. Like, that's how that's how that's how much of a staple, you know what I'm saying? This place the is. What's your favorite? What's your favorite? Uh, favorite thing on the menu here? Roasted chicken. Roasted, roasted chicken. Roasted chicken. The six piece roasted chicken. Um, that's what it is with the cottage fries. Uh, you got to substitute the coleslaw with the with the salad, extra cucumbers, no tomatoes, and you and they got the best ranch dressing in the world. For me, I still, <laughs> I still dibble dabble in pork a little bit, so I'm a ribs guy. Mm. But like you said, you can't go wrong with the roasted chicken. That's the shrimp. only thing. That's the only thing I, I miss is the ribs. You know, have them sitting here right you now. And, and this is the only real time that I'll, to be honest, I don't really eat pork all that often. Like you know what I'm saying, maybe like breakfast or something like that. Uh, but when it comes to boneyard, all that go out the window. Man, I mean, it's crazy when I sit there and say like or think about how many years you played. You know, and it's kind of, people talk about the TB12 method. You know what I'm saying? Like, what's like, what was what was the KG5 <laughs> method like playing? How many, because I thought it was 17, you said 18 seasons? 18 seasons. How was it like playing it for 18 years? When you first make it professionally and you start getting paid to do something that you like love to do, it doesn't really process. I can pay this for 20 years, you know? Yeah. You, it, that doesn't process to you. So you're just trying to make it through a season. It didn't process to probably maybe my like fifth year. And this was probably like the second year of me becoming like a full-time starter. Damon Allen was one of the guys who I kind of looked up to, Marcus Allen's brother. He played in the CFL for a long time. And like his longevity, I used to see him and I used to be like, man, I used to watch him play when I was in college and high school. And he's still playing right now as I'm playing. So I used to like, now I'm starting to like man like see like this could possibly be something that i can do you know so now that's when i started asking the questions man how do you what do you do to stay in shape or what do you do he used to tell me like your lower half if you always if you stay in shape this is something like you you have a gift as far as throwing a football um 
you can and you can train your mind to read defenses and all that and, and study film and all that kind of stuff. But staying in shape is one of the biggest things because they're gonna try to bring guys in here who are younger than yeah, you, who are in better shape, who are in better shape to take your position. How do you feel like from a person who's stepping now into the coaching kind of I don't want to say industry, but you know the coaching environment when it comes to football. How do you feel like, or what do you feel like the barriers are? How how tough would you say it is to kind of like, you know, break through those barriers, you know, kind of getting into coaching as a African-American coach? Very tough. Um, I think it just goes back to us as a, as a country, as a nation. And that's kind of why I'm doing the work that I'm doing right now in the high school um, is to kind of educate and expose um, individuals to other ways of thinking because we've thought a certain kind of way for so long in this country um, that sometimes when 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 you when someone says something different you think that they're the problem they're not necessarily the, the problem it's just that you've been conditioned to feel a certain kind of way your whole life we have to be perfect in order to sometimes keep a job and you look at mike tomlin um he's basically had to be Perfect. Never had a losing season. Never had a losing season. Imagine if he would have had a losing season. I'll say this. He may not be the head coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers right now. We have to overcome everything and be, be perfect at what we're doing in order to get the same justice as someone else. Do you know what it is? Is it a, can I, can you I open, open it? it? You can open it. Oh, yeah, I'll open it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want me to put all this food just in one box? Oh, uh, here we go. Man, thanks, bro. No, man, look, man. Like I said, here we go. Was, I got, I got more jerseys now to put in my. For me, I again, I never forget. You know, one of my first early on jerseys. Like and he, or that I got, that I got from you. So, and he, and he put it to my nickname, Puma. <laughs> I was. It's funny, it, bro. Me and my mom was talking about that. She was like, "What if he wanted you to write it to Kevin?" I was like, nah, "I don't ever think, think I've ever called, called him Kevin." Kevin. Like. <laughs> Like, I tell everybody that. Ever. I'm like, no, my my family don't call me Kevin. And they're like, seriously? I'm like, yeah, like everybody knows me by Puna. <laughs> and That's just what it is. So my mom said that. I was like, I'm like, well, I don't, again, like, I've never called him Kevin. Kevin. So exactly. I don't, but yeah, man. <laughs> Appreciate that, no, man. man. No Thanks. doubt, man. Again, like I said before, I think that, um, you know, for me, I definitely wanted to be able to, this you is, know, not give you the opportunity, but kind of give myself the opportunity to be able to, you know, kind of, uh, show my appreciation, you know, for you just over the years, like I said before, man, since I was five, six years old, you know, being able to watch you play from Illinois State to seeing you play almost 20 seasons in the, in the CFL, you know, and stuff like that is like, man, it goes such a long way. It do, man, I appreciate that. No that's what, uh, I mean, that's what this is about. Like you, like I said, it's, it's about giving. So sometimes we don't know that we're actually giving something back. Um, so that's why we got to make sure that we do the right for things sure. in the right situation. For sure, for sure. I really appreciate that. No, I'm no doubt. Try one of these no, no. onion rings. This is some great food. This is, not, this is not the type of food, though, <laughs> that you can eat during season. No, at all. It's funny. If you do it, you got to do it at the beginning of the week so it gets out of your body, it's funny. out of your system before the end of the week. It's funny because it's like going to the food places here in Detroit, I feel like I've been full. I feel like I've been full for the past 36 hours. <laughs> for real, for real. And it was like, I couldn't imagine eating like this all the time. Oh, no. Nah. Yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, sometimes they do call it. When it comes to food spots, man, that Detroit. That city. Detroit got a lot. Yeah, man, Detroit underrated, man. We've only, uh, I ain't gonna lie. You've probably only um, uncovered a couple of them. Detroit have a lot. Mm. Some really good food, though. My favorite thing would probably be the roasted wings. It's just a staple. I've been eating it since I've been about nine or ten years old. It's tough to choose for me between the ribs and the chicken. It's tough to decide. Those are like the two that's like. But that's the thing is like you can't really go wrong. Like you said, the roasted roasted chicken, the ribs. Man, you can't go wrong at all. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, gentlemen? How you doing? How was everything? Man, it was great. Incredible. Yeah? Incredible. Beautiful, beautiful.
I don't need to do no research, I just let the nerves read up I'ma be a DJ with the nose bleeders I got them dead sellers with me in a trap Got bones in my bag, get yeah, me in the back All my dead sellers where you at? I've been out here getting racks Do people kind of come intentionally in here to set records? If you can impress the staff, you can get on the record board I eat like at least a dozen burgers a week 